I'm actually struggling a little bit to use the circular saw. Hi, I'm Danner. I'm a computer engineering student from Huntsville, Alabama. When I was a kid, my family built this shed in the hills of southern Tennessee. It sat dormant for nearly 20 years and began to deteriorate. I'm currently on a mission to restore the shed and convert it into an amazing tiny house. With the help of my dad, I'm learning the basics of construction, restoring the land, and documenting our story. This is Abandoned Shed to Tiny House. Hey everyone, so today we're here at Marvin's in Fayetteville, Tennessee, and we're about to get our first load of lumber. So they're gonna package it up for us and deliver it to the shed. We just finished unloading our first load of lumber and this is going to be all the lumber that we need for the garage side of the house. It feels really awesome to see all the wood sitting right here and we were really close to buying lumber right before I got my surgery but since we decided to wait we actually saved a couple thousand dollars because it went down so fast in the last couple weeks so we're really happy that we got it at a lower price but of course now it's probably going to drop a little bit more and we just wanted to go ahead and get framing before the summer ends so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to come back tomorrow and go ahead and start framing this thing. This is the amazing view that we have out back and the sounds of nature are just really incredible out here and it is really hot outside. It's the middle of summer here in Tennessee and everything's a little bit grown up but we're just standing here thinking about all the possibilities we have and how amazing it's going to look when we get it all cleared out. We have this valley um, that's just going to be an amazing view and then down there we have our spring and um, I think it's just going to be really awesome to work on all this property and get it to how we like it and just have fun doing it. But we're really grateful for your support and really happy that we're able to enjoy this. Thank you to all you who are watching. It's just an amazing opportunity that I'm getting to have so it's pretty awesome. So if you go back to one of the first episodes, you can see that there were just vines all over the shed. And this one even grew up underneath the wood. So this is one of the last ones and we're gonna pull it off now. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> so because the form's bent a little bit and the wall isn't perfectly straight, we want to avoid having a lip like this because it will catch rainwater and then the water will run up under the wall. We really want this to be at least flush or maybe out over a little bit so that the siding can hang down just a little bit and that will allow the water to run down and pass that joint so that you won't get leaking up under the wall. So a common thing on most tape measures is there will be a marking every 16 inches and that's for when you're doing studs like we are, you'll be able to easily put a mark every 16 inches. And if you're ever looking for studs in your house and you don't have a stud finder, that's one easy way. You just go to the edge of the wall, pull it out, and then you can see that there should be a stud every 16 inches in most cases. Okay, so it's the next day now. Yesterday we finished getting the walls framed for our shop slash garage area. It was pretty fun, but we ran out of time and decided to camp at the shed for the night. So we did some burgers on the grill set up right here. It was really awesome. And then uh, we actually decided to get a cheap air conditioning unit from Walmart, a window mounted one. And surprisingly without insulation and with all the gaps in the shed, it worked really well. So. It was nice and cool and we got to uh, sleep in some hammocks for the night. Today we're going to be finishing up the walls. We have to do some top plates, some corners, some bracing, and then we're going to start doing the rafters. So we're going to start figuring out those measurements and then cutting out rafters and we're going to see where we can get to today. But our goal for right now is to get as close to drying this thing in as possible. At this time of the year in Tennessee there's daily showers so when we cut the roof we want to time it perfectly so that everything's dried in and we don't get too much water inside. Dad's actually about to be going out of town and then right after that I'm going to be heading to DEF CON for a week so we just want to get as much as we can right now and then go from there.
So we're working on our rafters and we want our final rafter to have a 212 pitch and if you're wondering what I mean by that, that's rise over run, so 2 over 12. And since we're attaching our ledger to an angled roof instead of a vertical one, we had to account for that. So we started by translating the angle of the roof to the board to figure out how we'd get the rafter level. And then from there we used our speed square to add a 212 line to it. Once we did that, we just added a 2x10 onto the end of it just to mock up a temporary ledger. And we held it up on the frame and I added a mark at the end to figure out where we wanted to notch in the board. And by the way, this notch is called a bird's mouth. I'm not really sure why, but that's what it's called. But yeah, after we knew where it touched, we went ahead and drew out our bird's mouth and cut that out. And when we put it up, it fit perfectly. The bird's mouth lined up and we checked the pitch and it was exactly 212. So now we have one working rafter. We're going to go ahead and translate this to all the other boards and just cut out our rafters and get going. So we're starting to get a system down with copying these rafters from this template. We've pretty much just been tracing this one and then cutting off the little bits. I'm actually struggling a little bit to use the circular saw. Dad's really good at it, but um, for some reason I just, it's hard for me to get the, the line really straight. So we're just taking our time and I'm practicing with the saw. And you know, if it was if it was like an actual framer doing this, they'd probably have this knocked out in no time, but I really just don't have much experience with the saw, so I'm taking my time learning and just trying to do it right. And also, it's really hot out here today, and I wanted to ask my audience, what's your favorite kind of shirt to wear when you're doing a uh, workout in the sun? Because Dad and I have been trying out a few shirts, and they always just get completely soaked, and it's kind of uncomfortable to work in, so let me know your favorite work shirt. Okay, so we just finished up cutting all of our rafters and we did find out we're a couple uh, two by eight short and Marvin's doesn't have any more. So we're just gonna go ahead and start installing what we have. So we're gonna start by taking down all this metal on the existing roof and then we're gonna install a, our ledger. After that, we're going to start cutting the existing roof uh, wood because this new decking is gonna be higher up than the original one was. and. After that, we'll be able to install all the rafters that we have, and then hopefully we can install, put some plastic up or something to keep it out of the weather just for the days that we're gone, and then uh, we're gonna go from there. And as far as cutting the rafters goes, it definitely got a lot easier once we came up with a system, and we just started, we just became a machine and just started cutting them out and cutting them out. So uh, yeah, we, we really just had to figure out a system that we can work together just to be able to get it done. And all this was really just a dry run for the other side because we're going to have to do this all over again. But um, I think we're going to be able to do it way faster next time now that we have a system down. And I think it's just going to keep getting easier now that we're learning our tools a little bit better. So yeah, it's uh, fun getting to get a little bit better about at this and gain some experience.
Okay, so we did run out of time for today because the rafter didn't really line up exactly how we wanted it to, so we are gonna have to make some adjustments. We just aren't gonna have time for it today, so in the next video, we're gonna be fixing all these rafters, and putting them up, and just completely drying in this shop side. So make sure you're subscribed and your post notifications are on so you don't miss that video. Now before light runs out, we need to dry in this roof because we did take off the metal and now it's kind of exposed to the rain. So we're gonna do that now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.